Hi, my name is Dana and welcome to One More Row, the channel where we talk about knitting and expand our skills one row at a time. In today's video, we're going to make a dishcloth. It's made with a garter stitch border and the center panel is in stockinette stitch. And in this video, you will learn how to make the purl stitch, which when combined with the knit stitch, stitch will give you that lovely V shape that's universally recognizable as knitting. So if you'd like to learn how to do the purl stitch, please keep watching. Okay, so what we need for this project is, again, 100% worsted weight cotton yarn. The back will say either worsted weight or it'll say number four. A pair of 4.5 millimeter needles, a wool needle for weaving in our ends, and of course, a pair of scissors for cutting the ends. In uh, the previous video where we learned how to cast on and how to do the knit stitch, I showed you how to do a long tail cast on. In this video, I thought I would show you a different method of casting on. This method is called cable cast on or the knitted cast on. And the reason I didn't show you in the last video was because in order to make it, you have to know how to make the knit stitch. This is a good cast on if you want an elastic edge. So it's perfect for the top of socks or if you're knitting something that has a large number of stitches and you don't quite know how long to make your tail. And it starts with a slip knot, just like every other cast on method. So we have our first stitch on here. And if you hear chirping in the background, that is my parrot. He's a little bit vocal this evening, so hopefully he won't start screaming, but you may hear the odd chirping. So we have our first stitch on the needle. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert our right hand needle from front to back, just like we would if we were going to knit. And then because I knit Irish cottage style, I'm going to tension my yarn around my middle finger and then have it fall across my ring finger and my right hand needle will just rest in the cradle of my thumb and I'm going to make a stitch by wrapping the yarn around and pulling it through but instead of slipping this stitch off I'm going to pop this one onto the needle and now I have two stitches then I'm going to take my right hand needle as if I was going to knit, but instead of inserting it in the stitch, I'm going to insert it in between the two stitches I just made. And then wrap my yarn around, pull it through, and pop it on the needle. Again, insert your, your needle in between the stitch you just made and the one previous to that. Wrap your yarn around, pull it through, pop the stitch on and I'll show you slowly one more time. So insert your needle in between the two stitches, wrap your yarn around, and pop the stitch back on. Now we need 40 stitches for this particular dishcloth, so I will go ahead and cast those on using this method. So we have five stitches so far, so here we go.
Okay, so I have 40 stitches on the needle. And in order to do the garter stitch border around this, what we need to do is knit the first three rows. And the reason I put a garter stitch border on this dishcloth is because stockinette stitch has a, it, it, it likes to curl. And for something like a dishcloth, you want it to lie flat. So by putting on a garter stitch border along the bottom and then a three stitch border on each side of the stockinette stitch, that will keep it pretty flat. So I'm not going to make you watch me knit three rows. And you, if you've done the cast on, then you know how to do the knit stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit three rows and then I will come back when we're ready to do our fourth row and when I will show you how to purl. So I'll be back. Okay, so we have completed three rows of knitting and we are ready to do row number four. This, uh, every even row will be a purl row and it will be the wrong side of the fabric. Stockinette does have a very distinct right side and wrong side or reverse side I guess you could say and if you'll see on my sample this is the right side this is the strict this the knit side and you can tell because it's very flat and it's got those V's if you look on the other side this is the pearl side and it has all these pretty little bumps and they're called pearl bumps so stockinette makes it very easy to tell whether you're on the right side or the wrong side of your knitted fabric. So in order to frame this we're going to knit the first three stitches and then we will start purling. So in order to purl what you need to do is bring your yarn to the front of the needle. Instead of going from front to back like you would if you were knitting, you're going to bring your needle, your right hand needle, from the back to the front through the front leg of the stitch. And you'll notice that instead of crossing in behind, our right hand needle now crosses in front of the left hand needle. And then with the same motion that you used when you made your knit stitch, you just scoop around and wrap the yarn around. You can tighten your yarn a little with your uh, ring finger just by flexing it down. And then you take your left hand needle and you just slip that stitch off. And that makes the purl stitch. I'll show you again. Insert your needle from front to back, wrap your yarn around, and then slip off the previous stitch. One more time. Insert your needle from back to front through the front leg, crossing your right hand needle in front of the left hand needle, wrap your yarn around, and slip off your stitch. Now I'm going to, to purl to the last three stitches, and I'll do it as slowly as I can just so that you can get a feel for how this works and once I get to the last three stitches I'll show you what you do next. Okay, so now we have three stitches left on our left hand needle and what we're going to do is we're going to knit them. So you just bring your yarn back to the back of the right hand needle, insert your needle from front to back again as you do for the knit stitch, wrap your yarn around, slip your needle, uh, your stitch off. And then the last three are like that. 
So that was row number four. Uh, row number five is very easy. All we're going to do is knit straight across. So on your odd numbered rows or on the front of your work, you're going to just knit straight across. On your even numbered rows or the back of your work, you're going to knit three and purl across. So what I will do is I will just knit across here and then I will demo the purl side one more time. Okay, so we're row number six, and it is going to be knit three, purl to the last three stitches, and then knit three. So quickly demoing the purl stitch again. Your yarn, bring your yarn to your, the front of your right hand needle. Insert your needle through the front leg, going from back to front. Wrap your yarn and slip your stitch off. And the purl stitch, when done, well, while holding your yarn this way actually is one of the easiest way to, to, ways to do the purl stitch. Other knitting methods, sometimes the purl stitch can get a bit awkward just because of the angle when you have to knit to, at the front. But with Irish, Irish, bleh, with Irish cottage style, um, the motion is exactly the same. Uh, as it is when you're doing your knit stitch. The only difference is, is that your yarn is oriented at the front and you're bringing your needle through the f f from back to front instead of front to back. And I'll just quickly show you once we get to the knit stitch how it is virtually the same. Okay, so we just transition our yarn to the back and you'll notice that my hand is making the exact same motion. The only changes is where my yarn is oriented on the work and with where my needle gets inserted. So now that we have our pattern established, what we're going to do is we're going to knit until the work measures about six inches. You can certainly go a little bit longer than that if you want a, a, a larger cloth, but I find six inches for this number of stitches to be a, a very good length because we're also going to need to do another garter stitch border at the top. So what I will do is I will knit this off camera and come back when it measures six inches. And just remember that on your odd numbered rows or the front side of your work, you're just going to knit straight across and then on your even side rows or the back of your work you're going to knit three purl to the last three stitches and then knit the last three three stitches and i will see you when i get to six inches okay so we're back and we've got quite a bit of cloth knit now and i'm just going to measure it it is six inches i did check but i will show you how to measure your knitting um, it's very important when you are measuring that you don't that that your knitting is flat but you don't want to stretch it either widthwise or lengthwise because that will distort the measurement that you get with a dishcloth it's not hyper crucial that you don't do that but it's a good habit to get into for when you start making things where measurements are crucial such as sweaters because you don't want to distort your measurements for your sleeves or the bodies of your sweaters because they won't be the proper length if you stretch it too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to take something that you can use to measure. I have um, dressmaker's tape here but you can certainly use a ruler or uh, a measuring tape like one of the retractable kinds and what we're going to do is we're going to butt the edge up to the base of the live stitches that are on 
your needle. In this case, it's the cord, but that's just because I have a circular needle. And then you're just going to smooth the tape down. And you can see here that I'm a little bit over. I'm at six and three quarter inches or 16 centimeters for those of you who like the metric system. Um, and that's okay. It, it's only an approximate measurement. Okay, so to finish it off, what we're going to do is we're going to knit across this row. And then in, on the next row, instead of knitting three, purling, and then knitting the last three stitches like we have been for the body of this um, dishcloth, we're going to knit straight across. Then we're going to knit another row and then one more knitted row after that. And I will just quickly do that. And then once I get that finished, I will show you the bind off. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have done four rows of knitting and we're ready to bind off. The, in the last video that I did, I showed you a bind off method where on your last row of knitting, you slip the first stitch so that your last stitch on your bind off row is not oversized. I didn't do that this time because I wanted to show you what you can do um, when you get to the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to knit those last two stitches together, but I'll show you how to do that once we get there. Now to bind off, we're going to do it the exact same way that we did in the last video, but I will give you a quick refresher. So you knit your first stitch and you knit your second stitch. You take the stitch that's closest to your hand and you pop it over the top of the stitch you just made. Then you knit your next stitch and you do the same thing. And you keep going like that until you get all the way across and you are left with one stitch here and then two stitches at the end. So once we get there I'll show you what to do. Okay, so we have two stitches left on the left hand needle and we have one on the right. So what we're going to do instead of just knitting that first stitch individually, what we're going to do is we're going to insert our right hand needle from front to back into both stitches so that they're, they're together and they're almost treated like one stitch. And then you just wrap your yarn around, you flip both stitches over and there you've knit two together and then you pop this stitch that was on your, your right hand needle originally over and that's it and then we're going to cut our end and bring the tail through the loop and pull it tight and the cloth is done all we need to do now is weave in our ends and I can see that my camera battery is about to die so what I will do is I will change the battery and then I will be back and show you how to weave in your ends okay so we're back with a fresh battery and now I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends in the last video that I did in lesson one I just did a whip simple whip stitch along the edge but this time I'll show you something a little bit different. We're going to weave our ends into the body of the cloth. So we have the pearl side facing up and you just thread your wool needle. And you'll notice with the pearls stitches that you've got dips, these little valleys and then these little hills. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend our tail yarn in with these so that you can't see them as well as if we just 
whipped it along the back. So I'm just going to make my way over to some spot there. So I'll just kind of move diagonally from the corner. I got too much. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to come down a little bit. Well, right about here is good because the see this color here matches those stitches there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down until I go through this hill stitch right there. Then I'm going to come up through this one and what this yarn will do is it will create a matching little valley stitch right there. So I'm going to go come up through that one and then the next valley stitch that's diagonally above it I'm going to come up that one as well. Oops. And then just pull it. And then I'm going to go over into the valley stitch that's right beside it and then go down through it and a heel stitch that's diagonal to it. And as you can see, my tail yarn is mirroring the wave motion of the purl bumps. So I'm going to come up through this hill stitch and up through that valley stitch. And you, you always want to go diagonally because then that way when you come down again, you're always going to be going in the same direction that your purl bump is going. So then I'm going to go through this valley stitch and this hill stitch and pulling it through. And as you can see, it's very hard to tell where my tails are. And then I'm just going to do one more like that. So up, up a valley and a hill or a hill and a valley rather, and then over diagonally like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut my tail really close to the fabric. And you don't have to worry, it's not going to unravel because it's woven in through. And then what you do is you turn your work around and then on the other side you do the same thing with this thread. And then once that's done, you will have a finished dishcloth. Just hide that tail because I'm not going to weave it in right now. So I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Um, if you'd like to make a comment or ask any questions or if you have anything to say, please leave a comment. Um, if you enjoyed this video, if you did learn something, please give it a like. And if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe so that you can be notified of when I release another video. And if you hit the bell, you'll get it into your YouTube feed and you will get a notification on when my next video comes out. But until then, thank you for joining me and we'll see you soon.